And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! The Detroit Lions were robbed on Saturday Night Football in a primetime matchup between two of the NFC's best teams in the conference. The Detroit Lions were robbed on the road by the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I am not somebody who typically goes out of their way to blame the referees or blame one single coaching decision for the winning or losing of a football game. However, last night seems to be a very different scenario as the Detroit Lions with 23 seconds left after playing arguably their most impressive game of the 2023 season went for a two-point conversion to win the game to put them up 21 to 20 and not only did they convert not only did they finish celebrating but they got almost all the way back to the sidelines before the referees decided to throw a flag call a penalty and essentially take the game away from the Detroit Lions. Now, I have this pulled up so that there's no misquoting, there's no misunderstanding. This is what head referee Brad Allen said after the game when asked the question about the call. The question is, we noticed there were two flags thrown on the same play. Was there another penalty called on the play as well? Allen responded by saying, yes, because number 70 reported as eligible and he was covered up on the line of scrimmage, that makes it an illegal formation. So number 70 is in an illegal position because he is covered up by rule number 68 catch the pass, which is also illegal touching. The problem is... Taylor Decker is actually the one that reported as eligible, while number 70, Dan Skipper, did not. There is clear video evidence of all three tackles going over to head referee Brad Allen, and only one of them being number 68, Taylor Decker, who is right in the face of Brad Allen, patting his chest, declaring himself, and showing that Brad Allen that he is the eligible party, and he is the player that will be eligible as a receiver on that play. Therefore, because number 70, Dan Skipper, did not declare as eligible, he is allowed to be covered up, and Taylor Decker is allowed to be uncovered because he is an eligible receiver on the play, meaning both of those flags were incorrect because head referee Brad Allen did not report Taylor Decker as eligible, and he assumed that number 70, that Dan Skipper coming onto the field, was going to be the eligible player and didn't actually check with the players or actually do his job correctly. Now, again, I don't think that this is 100% the sole reason that the Detroit Lions lost. They very well could have kicked an extra point. They very well could have taken three earlier in the game. They could have tackled Dak Prescott for a safety instead of allowing a 92-yard touchdown throw to C.D. Lamb. There were moments that Detroit had to win this football game. They had opportunities, and they had moments to put this game away, and they had moments to win this game outright and not have it come down to a two-point conversion. But it did come down to a two-point conversion, and the Detroit Lions were unfairly and unjustly taken a victory away from them. Now, with that being said, I wanted to get this out of the way because I want to talk about it. Yes, I do feel as though the Detroit Lions were robbed. I do feel as though the Detroit Lions played their best game of the season, outplayed the Dallas Cowboys, and when 90% of America agrees that the Detroit Lions were on the wrong side of a call, that's how you know you really messed up as a referee. There has been punishment dished out by the NFL. I do believe now that Brad Allen's team and his coaching and his referee and crew are no longer allowed to referee in the 2024 playoffs, but that does not take away from the the pain the Detroit Lions are feeling today. But I, overall, I actually thought it was a very positive game for the Detroit Lions. And I do want to talk about the game as a whole and not just that one play and that one sequence of events that eventually led to the Detroit Lions downfall. Jared Goff was okay on the night. Jared Goff was 19 of 34, 271 passing yards, one touchdown to two interceptions. He was sacked just one time, which for going against a very good pass rush, that's a really good thing for the offensive line. I know they were facing a lot of scrutiny last night, but they allowed just one sec. Jared Goff was able to move around really well, did throw two picks, 
Second one was really, really bad. It was a poor placed ball. But the first one was really just a great play by the defensive back. Jared Goff didn't see him on the screen pass, and he made a great play on Jared Goff. Jalen Reeves may have been also in one for one for 31 yards on a fake punt. It was a great and a beautifully called fake punt, and it helped the Detroit Lions turn a what would have been dead drive into points against an NFC powerhouse. The rushing attack was good, but wasn't great as David Montgomery had 14 carries for 65 yards, and Jameer Gibbs had 15 carries for 43 yards. He had a couple other big plays called back due to holding or tripping or whatever the case may be, but overall, I thought that the rushing attack was pretty solid on the night, and I thought the Lions were able to do it pretty well at times versus Dallas's front. Amon Ross St. Brown had a good day, had six receptions for 90 yards and a touchdown off of eight targets. Sam Laporta had 12 targets, seven receptions for 84 yards. Jamison Williams had two catches for 69 yards before leaving the game early with a either rolled ankle or something of that nature. Josh Reynolds had a catch for 13 yards. Khalil Dorsey had one catch for 31 yards. Khalif Raymond had one for 11 and James Mitchell had one for Four. Jameer Gibbs had three targets and one catch, but was unable to get any yards in front of the line of scrimmage. Defensively, I thought there was a lot of good, and I thought there was a lot of bad. Cam Sutton was among the good and the bad. Cam Sutton had 10 total tackles, which led the team and one tackle for loss, but was a huge part of why was a huge part of why C.D. Lamb was able to have such an elite top-tier game. He gave up a lot of yards, gave up a lot of receptions, but he did stay out there and battled through an injured ankle, and I think that overall I didn't think his night was awful, but he certainly did not get the better of C.D. Lamb on the night. Alex Angelini was good, having eight total tackles and one tackle for loss. Kirby Joseph had six tackles, but Aiden Hutchinson was the best defensive player of the night. Aiden Hutchinson was elite on the night, having five tackles, three sacks, five tackles for loss and several other pressures on top of it. Aiden Hutchinson was the best player on the field last night for the Detroit Lions, and it was not particularly close. Kendall Victor also had a tackle for loss. Derek Barnes officially, according to ESPN, had one tackle for loss, although I'm pretty sure he had at least two after the missed safety opportunity. The Lions had eight tackles for loss on the night and three sacks. Josh Pascal had some good had some good impact. Bruce Irvin had some good impact. Uh, Ifiatu Malafanu came away with the lone interception off of Dak Prescott. And overall, I thought the defense for going up against a team that averaged 40 points at home every single week, holding them to 20, holding them within one point of a victory. I thought the defense had some bad moments, but overall, for the most part, I thought played really well. And especially in the big moments, especially on third down, I thought they were really, really good and they looked significantly better than they have in the past. Taking a look at the Dallas Cowboys side of things, Dak Prescott was 26 of 38, 345 passing yards, two touchdowns, but one interception by the Ifiatu Melifonwu. Dak Prescott was sacked three times, all three by Aiden Hutchinson, but pressure by Hutchinson also forced the interception, so there was a lot of big plays made by number 97. Tony Pollard really didn't have a whole lot going for him. 16 carries for 49 yards. He had two or three where he really got through the line and got some good gains, but other than that, he had four or five plays that ended behind the line of scrimmage. C.D. Lamb had one carry for five yards. Dak Prescott had two for five. Deuce Vaughn had two for two. Overall, it was a 21 carry night for 61 yards by Dallas. Not a great rushing attack and continued dominance by the run defense of Detroit. Receiving was pretty bad. C.D. Lamb had 13 catches for 227 yards and a touchdown with a long of 92 yards. Brandon Cooks had five catches for 60 and a touchdown while Jake Ferguson had four for 33. CeeDee Lamb was the biggest issue last night, and the Lions truly had no answer for CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb did fumble out of the back of the end zone, which gave the Lions the ball back, as, as did Dak Prescott one time, and Terrence Steele recovered it. The Lions were able to force two fumbles and an interception, and for, I believe, the third game in a row now, they have forced multiple turnovers in the game on defense. Defensively for the Cowboys, Donovan Wilson led the team in tackles. Marquise Bell was the lone player. Nope had one tackle for loss on 10 total tackles. Jerron Curse actually, I thought, had a really good game. Micah Parsons had two tackles for loss, as did Demarcus Lawrence. There was a couple of players that were really good. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong was the only player to come away with a sack on Jared Goff last night. I thought Penny Sewell completely shut down Micah Parsons pretty much. Every time he lined up against Penny Sewell, it was... Penny Sewell's victory, and it was not even particularly close. I don't know if Pen I don't know if Micah Parsons even touched Jared Goff when going against Penny Sewell on the right side. Jordan Lewis, the Michigan alumni, as well as Donovan Wilson, both came away with interceptions off of Jared Goff, and unfortunately, Brandon Aubrey was perfect on the night. Two extra points, two field goals to be a top scorer. I put up eight points on the board for 
the Cowboys. Overall, this game obviously hurts that the Detroit Lions lost. Obviously, there was a lot of a lot of scrutiny at the end. There was a lot of miscommunication. There a lot of hurt feelings, and there is a lot of things to be upset about. But the play of the Detroit Lions was not one of them. The Lions had more first downs than the Cowboys. The Detroit Lions had more total plays ran. They had more total yards. They had less total drives. They averaged more yards per play. They had less passing yards, but significantly more rushing yards. They had more sacks. They had more penalties, which doesn't help them. Thanks, Brad Allen. They had the same amount of turnovers. They had more time of possession. They were the better team. They outplayed the Dallas Cowboys for pretty much the entirety of the game. And it sucks that the last play turned into three different two-point conversions after the Detroit Lions had won, after the Detroit Lions had done everything right, and it, the game was taken away from them. But they are still 11-5. and five. They are still NFC North champs. They are pretty much essentially right now locked into the three-seed. And I think that this was their best game as a football team all year. I know that they lost to a really good football team, but my takeaways from this game was not that, wow, the Detroit Lions are frauds. It was not, wow, the Detroit Lions can't compete with great teams. It was that the Detroit Lions can very much compete with Dallas. They can very much compete and potentially even beat a team like Philadelphia at the two seed. The Detroit Lions, I think, are easily a top three to four seed in the NFC right now and they are going to be competitive in the playoffs. I do not think this team is going to be a one-and-done playoff team. I do not think this team is going to lose in the wild card round if they play the Rams, if they play the Seahawks again, if they play the Vikings again, if they play uh, whoever it may be. Whoever sneaks into that sixth seed or that seventh seed, I think the Detroit Lions will beat them, and I think they will, at the very least, go on to the NFC division round. So with all that being said, I know it sucks. I know that, you know, the 92 yard touchdown was a huge slap in the face. I know that the interceptions 100% hurt the Detroit Lions. And I know that this play at the very end, after a nine play, 75 yard drive, hurt the Detroit Lions a ton. But at the end of the day, the Detroit Lions played their best game of football. At the end of the day, the Detroit Lions looked like a true, true NFC contender. At the end of the day, the Detroit Lions played like a top three seed in the NFC. And I think more than anything yesterday, they proved that they not only belong in the playoffs, but that they will make some noise in the NFC playoffs. So with all that being said, I got for you guys right now. Let me know down in the comments below your biggest takeaways from this game. I'm very curious you guys have to say, but with all of that being said, that is I for you guys right now. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.